All we are saying is give peace a chance. It's all I'm saying, friends. It's all I'm saying. Welcome. I hope you're having an amazing day so far. Thankfully, our energy shift has come to an end. It has concluded, along with that Mercury retrograde, that dreaded Mercury retrograde, and things seem to be a little oddly quiet lately. Don't you agree, the past week? Although Spirit does warn, of course, it's just the quiet before the storm. So is there another Lahaina type of event being planned right now by the globalists? If so, where and when could it actually occur? And will justice ever be served in this case, in, in future cases? The United States just made some really shady deals with Iran. So what is that all about exactly? Iran? Shady deals? Did they actually break the current administration? Did they go against the rules of never, ever paying a ransom for hostages? They tell us no, but is it actually true? I got some alarming information about this shady deal and some other information about Iran today. And if you're not aware of Mexico's recent release, this is pretty cool, friends. The recent release of UFO and alien footage from the Mexican government who held hearings like they did here in the United States, except not with whistleblowers. They held hearings with the government showing us footage, footage that I'm going to show you today. And if you haven't seen it, it's pretty wild. It's literally a recreation of E.T. himself. <laughs> Last week, I talked about dam breaches. I talked about it actually before that as well, but we talked about it last week because of the poor folks in Libya where it's now being reported more than 20,000 people are presumed deceased or missing and or missing. So are these current weather events in places like Libya, what happened in Morocco, and parts of, of, of other events that are happening, is this actually part of the globalist depopulation agenda were these storms actually created or were they natural which ones were created and which ones were natural we're going to talk about that of course today and folks all over the world may not be aware but are aware not only aware folks all over the world are convinced 100 percent that the fire in lahaina hawaii was create a created event and not at all a natural one more and more evidence is coming out, but again, no justice is being served, as usual. Nor is, there, is this at all being looked at from an investigation standpoint, as far as we know. But as far as we know, they closed it all off, and you can't get nowhere near it, and there's all kinds of people in there, but are they actually investigating the truth? And will justice be served once again in this case and other future cases and past cases, like what happened in California? And the same thing happened in Canada as well. Spirit warned me that there's another one coming to the United States specifically. I remember a while back, I warned that there'd be an attack between Alaska and Hawaii. I felt an attack coming and I warned Hawaii. And I would have never imagined it would have been what happened. We were thinking maybe Chinese troops invasion. Wasn't, wasn't thinking that type of attack. But we have to look at current times and the way things are flowing now. Technologies that we're just learning about which means that there's technologies that would be like mind-blowing if people actually knew. And of course, technologies like the alleged earthquake-causing machine that they built in the South Pole. Again, they're throwing it out as a lie, of course, as they always do. And again, we have Mexican government showing us aliens and bringing out truth. What's going on here exactly, friends? It's kind of interesting times, to say the least. Very, very interesting times. So... That attack, Spirit again says that there's another one coming for United States. An attack, I'm not saying, an, well, yeah, another one, I guess. Definitely another one. But to United States, the same type of attack that we witnessed and the people of Lahaina had to deal with. So where exactly could this be? And when could this be coming? We're going to talk about that today. They are um, telling us that Italy right now or over the weekend, was just bombarded with thousands and thousands of migrants illegally coming onto their island and they're crossing over their borders. Why, here in the United States, we have millions flocking over into the United States, which also includes, I must add, as you know, organized criminals, <clears throat> excuse me, and a group that Spirit showed me is created to bring, like, horror, terror, or something of some sort to several big cities within the United States. 
When? I don't think necessarily in the near future, but it's being planned. And I'm not saying that that plan is going to be fulfilled. Hopefully not. But they're also crossing over into other cities like Paris, France. And alarming information about these criminal groups and whether this migrant issue will pan out well or whether or not it's going to become a larger issue down the line. Remember, I think it was last week. I think it was last week. I said about ta attacks in Paris and I had those visions. And maybe it was in my channel predictions. I don't remember, but it was recently. It was in the past month that I talked about that. That just popped in my mind as a reminder. Recently, Silicon uh, Valley, big tech billionaires in California were forced to become transparent because they were buying up all the land. And they had the locals worrying and wondering why they are basically screwing farmers out of their land and the locals out of their land. If you ever watched the show Yellowstone uh, with, um, 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 oh, I just drew a blank on his name, but you know, the, the show. It's a really good show, actually. This is literally exactly what's happening on that show is exactly what's happening in california to a certain extent and you can likely guess what their agenda is here of course smart cities friends it's all about their smart cities and those smart cities they're calling them smart cities but they're more like smart prisons is better word for it yeah smart prisons that's what we'll start calling them the smart prisons that they're building all over so the same agenda that they had for lahaina we know this. That truth came out, right? Completely came out. We have the Hawaiians coming out on video talking about it. Uh, part of Canada where Can Canadians were also just recently burned out of their homes and neighborhoods. There's a plan to put one there as well. Details on this and the answer to the question of whether or not these psychopaths are going to succeed in this agenda. And will they ever face any type of justice system for their crimes? Wink, wink. You're going to have to stay tuned to find out. A while back, we were warned about another attack against our freedom of speech. And we were told that that was coming. And I said that earlier this year. It was a while ago. I said that months ago. And that it was coming to social media platforms. So is this attack actually just now beginning once again? Maybe, maybe not. Only because of the recent attacks and allegations against Russell Brandt. Is there any truth behind these allegations? And what exactly is happening here? And why are they targeting Russell Brandt? I have a lot to say about that. Along with Jack Nicholson, one of my fa favorite actors of all time. Jack Nicholson has been popping in my mind all week. So I figured it was likely health related, of course, and something coming up with Jack's health. And perhaps maybe Jack won't be back kind of deal. But Feisty Jack just mooned an audience, a Boston audience, um, I guess in California. I don't know if he was in Boston or California, but it was the Boston Celts. Boston Celts, whatever you want to call them. So what's going on? Is he losing his mind first, Mr. Nicholson? It seems like it may be so, and I'll just give you a little bit more information about him today. The coming storm that's going to hit Saudi Arabia, the impeachment of JB here in the United States, and a whole lot more on this. Episode number 83 of Tuesday's Tittle Tea Time Predictions Update. I welcome you all with infinite loving gratitude. Welcome you to my channel, back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for hanging out with us. We do this every single Tuesday, talking about world events, how they align with predictions and prophecy, and more predictions to go around them all. Also, if you want accurate predictions, truth, and prophecy, you found the perfect tribe, baby. Smash that subscribe. I thank all those that clicked the like button along the line, showing your true love for the content that I provide. Also, down below in the description, you will find all the links to social media, including the Awaken Your Spirit Subscribe Star community. My community of supporters there, those who join the community down below, and all those that are part of this community help make this free content possible for everybody else. And I couldn't do it without you, and I am forever grateful with infinite love and gratitude. So shall we move on? Also, download your free Spotify app today because you can find me on there as well. Same, same stuff, but if you want to listen, Instead of necessarily watch, you can always go to Spotify while you're driving and listen while, while you're on the road. Listen, do not watch. Listen. It's moving right along. So the equinox season is amongst us, friends. The equinox. Favorite time of year. Usually it falls on my birthday. 
This year it falls on the 23rd, which is odd. And I know the next four years afterwards it runs on my birthday again on the 22nd. But the equinox season is amongst us and it is here in the northern in the northern hemisphere where I reside. The beautiful colors of the dead leaves on the trees is actually a reminder to us of the beauty that is weaved within that cycle of death. While in the southern hemisphere, it's the exact opposite, showing us that after that death comes a rebirth in growth. Everything comes back to life after that dark cycle of death. And it's a great time, both sides of our planet. We're approaching October 31st, which is Samhain or All Hallows Eve, Halloween, and of course the Day of the Dead celebration. A time when the veil between our world and the spirit world gets very thin, which allows us to easily, more easily connect with our ancestors, loved ones, and yeah, even ghosts and spirits, which I don't recommend if you're not a professional, because you never know what you're tapping into if you don't know what you're doing. Just, just put that warning out for you. Stay away from them evil Ouija boards. They are evil. You will get a dark entity attachment if you play with one of them boards. Guaranteed. Com comes with a package when you buy it. So anyway, unfortunately, it is also a time where the evil doers, it's their seasons of sacrifices. You know, working hard to sacrifice themselves, if you know what I mean. To appease their uh, warlords, of course. So these rituals, so to speak, they play out in many different forms, many different ways. We can use things like Hawaii, Libya, and others as examples. So is there, if there is a time, more than ever, that all folks, all of us should be praying and holding in the light and holding love in the light, it would be right now, more than ever. Because what plays out over the remainder of this year, 2023, is actually going to determine the direction of of 2024 according to spirit everyone knows it everyone feels it but what is it exactly it's like sitting on the edge of a cliff waiting to witness the best view of the coming fireworks show that will hopefully lead to a grand finale that we can all celebrate and a grand finale that we would have never dreamed would be so darn beautiful so that's what we got to look at these coming events as big fireworks show that's about to go off in this world starting here in the united states of course but other places too that includes our friends down under and that includes everywhere pr pretty much things are going to shake and get very shaky and it's going to be interesting because whatever is coming and whatever i've been feeling and many others across the globe are feeling it many of you are feeling it whatever it is it's big and it kind of feels partly exciting like finally a little bit of justice being served i'm going to do Another channeled prediction session, uh, trance meditation uh, session. Maybe tonight, but after this long day, Tuesdays are pretty long putting all this content together for y'all, hanging out and chatting and all that. So if not tonight, definitely tomorrow I will record that. I want to do two separate sessions with two different focuses. One of those focuses eventually will be focusing on 2024 to give us a little sneak peek into 2024. Uh, so keep an eye out for that Thursday or Friday, probably Thursday, because you're not going to see me around because Friday is my day. I call it me day. <laughs> Everybody has a me day and you should celebrate me day. So speaking of uh, days, Iran. So what the heck is going on with the United States thinking, may, thinking when making, what are they thinking when they're making these very less than smart decisions that, that, that are not really good and they're not giving us the whole scoop on these decisions and deals that they're making with Iran? Uh, we are being told that there's no ransom being paid to Iran for, for their hostages that they released, American hostages. I don't know if they're all American. I didn't really pay much attention to the story other than just tapping in, seeing the story, and then tapping in with spirit. But we all know, if you look back in history at all the other deals that were made with Iran especially, there's always they're always doing something for Iran in exchange, take, taking care of Iran in exchange, always. So regardless, it's still paying a ransom. Spirit tells me that, that this will quickly come back to a bite America in their assets. That's what Spirit said. This deal will come back to bite America in its assets. It's exact words of Spirit. 
Spirit also says that releasing the restrictions and sanctions on Iran is basically the deal they made is actually giving them access to over six billion dollars that the United States put there to begin with. So really it is. It's been there forever and the United States are the ones that put that there. Therefore, technically making this a ransom pay for hostages, of course, friends. Of course, that's what it is. A large chunk of that money will instantly be wired over to the bad guys, according to Spirit. It will also give them the funds that they need to complete a mission that they have planned. A mission uh, of that began with the previous leader that was assassinated is what spirit said and i don't know i don't follow all that stuff but a previous leader that was assassinated had a mission had a plan and this is going to help them with the funds they need to initiate this plan and spirit also says that of course they want america to pay dearly for things in the past including killing this particular leader not with money, but instead, of course, with people, innocent people. Uh, so this is also going to help Iran when it comes to future, in the future, when it comes to conflicts with Israel as, as well, according to Spirit. So remember the secret army that Spirit showed us a long time ago, quite some time ago, a couple, it might have been a couple of years ago, that Spirit showed me that there was an army being formed, a, a very dark, evil army that included several countries, uh, Turkey, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, and I think I'm missing one. Maybe Saudi Arabia, but I can't remember the other one. Uh, it's been a while, but I know it was those four, and Spirit showed me that this is still happening, and that they now still, now they have these funds to help grow this army of darkness. Remember, just last week, I was telling you that there would be a return of evil being caused by groups like ISIS, or other radicals such as them. And now a week later, after telling you that, we can clearly see why Spirit sent us that warning last week. Makes total sense now, don't it? Makes total sense. So I feel everything, I feel something huge is going to erupt in the near future in the Middle Eastern countries. Especially when it comes to Iran and of course problems for Israel is where it's going to lead. And I believe this eruption is going to occur between 2024 and 2025. You know, it might be little frictions or little little conflicts before that, maybe even this year. But it felt to me like the end of 2024 into 2025, especially maybe around December of 2024. That time we have to watch. I won't remember this, but hopefully you'll remind me in a few months and remind others that I said this because I'm, I won't can't remember everything. But you guys are pretty good at keeping on top of that. Uh, one thing that America's not good at, or any other country apparently in Italy, is keeping on top of the migrant issues and the immigrant issues. So as you as you probably heard earlier, and today I said it, that uh, Italy was just recently bombarded with uh, illegal migrants crossing over their border, actually onto one of their islands. As United States, of course, has their gates wide open for every criminal and demon-possessed individual to come along over with the good people, too. The good people, too. Well, of course. But it helps weave in the bad people that have very negative intentions and very negative agendas. Especially for this country in the United States. But then it's not just us. It's other places, too. Remember my prediction that the United States was going to be separated into different unions of some sort? Remember, uh, um, like separated, like states gathered together in, in unions. It might even be referred to as the United Unions or something like that. And I feel like Canada is going to end up being a part of those unions as well. Whether they're separate unions or they come together, I feel like in the future they're going to try to join all, all the countries together. That's their, you know, one world government type thing. Combine Canada, Mexico, and United States as one. That's their their plan. And then separating us in unions by levels. They might even do it by the color of our skin and put you there and you there. Anything to divide us. That's what they want, basically. And it shouldn't be that way. And likely they'll divide us by, of course, incomes or things like that as well. Whereas most people won't have an income. That's that's their part of their initiative as well, unfortunately. So this is all part of the WEF. And their Agenda 23rd and 2030 initiate. 
So if you don't know about that, look it up. It's out there. They put everything in print for us to read right on their website. You can go to as well. They want to preserve places like, of course, Hawaii. They want to preserve places like New Zealand, parts of California, northern California, mostly uh, north of not far north, but mid, mid to northern, but above um Los Angeles, Los Angeles, like above that, a little bit north of that. So they want these areas to be exclusively for the billionaire elites. And the rest of us don't get to go there. That's that's their plan. Say it's crazy, say it's conspiracy, but I guarantee you that's their plan. And you're going to see that plan play out very, very soon. We are seeing it play out. By the look at what they again, we can keep bringing up Hawaii as an example. And even California, what happened in California already. So that's what they want to do, and they want to burn us out if they have to, and they will. They'll burn you out if they have to. They have the technology, and China's behind them, helping them do it as well, which is more evidence that just came out. Uh, I don't have that for you today. I should probably do a separate Lahaina video after my birthday vacation weekend. Uh, there was a guy that tracked satellites or something and was able to track the CCP's direct energy weapon satellite right above Lahaina at the time so you know I'll, I'll find that and I'll put that together and do something short on that I'll talk about Lahaina later on but I, I will definitely do something early in, in next week after birthday vacation of course so the billionaire elite they they'll burn you out they have they have this mission to fulfill their sinister agenda and of course usher in that one world world of everything one world everything one world religion currency all all of it so the migrant crisis is sadly according to spirit it's going to grow extensively as well as global homelessness over the next few years between now and 2025 and of course conflicts of course would be one part of the reason for people fleeing their homes and their neighborhoods and their cities but a larger scope of this in the near future we're starting to witness now is actually going to be caused by alleged weather events that are being pushed with that narrative of, you know, the agenda with our planet. Without saying the words, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so even though we should be aware of just some of the technology, we already know about some of their technology. We're already aware of it. I mean, I've showed you evidence of it a couple of weeks ago on this show and video evidence of some of their technologies, even news channels admitting to cloud seeding and everything else. Uh, but now just imagine what they have that we don't know about. And this includes the, the direct energy weapons and weather modifications and all of these systems that we're discovering that they have now. Again, imagine what they have that you don't know about. Things that they've been doing that you never would have dreamed that they were doing. Like the major wildfires that are happening globally. So I'm not clear on how long it's going to be before this all plays out. But definitely within the next decade, we are going to see residents fleeing parts of the United States, Canada, Japan. And before it becomes, again, a world epidemic of sorts, which it is already a world epidemic, truly. It's just here in the west side, we're not seeing it. Not yet. Anyway, knock on wood. So this would also fulfill native prophecy. If you go back to some of the native prophecies, prophecies talk about the native elders warning to flee to higher ground. They've even warned their, the elders warned their own grandchildren that you're going to want to go to the higher mountains, to the higher ground. Well, even though the elders were telling their grandkids that uh, in the native community, this is going to end up becoming, again, a global thing where people are going to start moving to higher ground, leaving the hot cities to go to higher elevations and attempt to be safe and a little bit cooler as well. See, here's the big issue with this, once again, is that we all know that the globalists can and will simply just burn out your options if they have to. Burn out your options. Hopefully, we'll have some type of justice that will be revealed and come out soon, hopefully. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. So, they want people out of the rural areas. I mean, look at, there's been even shows done on it and even documentaries about rural America and all these ghost towns in America now because people, they closed down the factories and people were forced to go to the cities. 
That was all planned decades and decades ago. This whole plan has been in store for probably over 100 years. It's always been a plan, Spirit says. It's always been their plan. Sickos, sick, 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 sick people. That's a shame that they are not well. <laughs> it is a shame that they are not well. They should give them meds. Instead, they're giving everybody else meds. Just saying. So yeah, that's what they want, friends. They want people out of the rural areas. They want to push you into cities and eventually into their encampments, such as FEMA camps in the United States. Speaking of FEMA camps that we've been talking about all the way back to the days of Bush, old man Bush and baby Bush, the Bush administration, who actually, old man Bush was the one, the administration that was responsible for funding billions of dollars into building these FEMA camps. So that's how long ago, again, this has been planned. These multi-billion dollars, because there's so many of them, billion dollar FEMA camps all over the place. And if you think you're safe because you're not in the United States, think again. So the, the, the Bush administration are the ones that build it. And, and soon Spirit says we're going to see, see them begin to put people in there imprisoning basically basically innocent people they're not fema camps to house people they're fema camps to imprison people um, we're going back right all the way back to the days of world war ii that's how sick these people are i wouldn't doubt at all that they are those same people from back then in that war <clears throat> i would not doubt at all because we know that that man never did die lived on and they hide within this country for sure, but they hide everywhere. Even in the UKR, we see them hiding. And y'all know what I'm talking about without me even saying, because we all know, clearly. It's probably what's behind all this. And a lot more, of course. And that's another thing Spirit showed me. Spirit showed me there's not like one group of white hats and one group of black hats, and that's just not true. There's actually several different groups of evil, evil groups with evil demising agendas and there's also several good groups that's what spirit told me recently there's both there's several and not all of them work together with each other either and some of them say the bad groups aren't even aware of the bigger bad groups because you know especially the higher up groups which we could say is the freemasons uh level 33 and a half initiates <laughs> uh allegedly allegedly so here in the United States, Spirit shows me that some of these FEMA camps are already being used and soon they are going to be secretly rounding up and it won't last long. It won't be a secret long. They're going to start rounding up homeless people and tossing them into these FEMA camps. When they get caught, they're going to say, oh, well, we're helping them. This is our way of helping the homeless now. This is our way of doing it, putting them in these places, help them get a job, even though they're never allowed out of the place. This is how they're going to start doing it. When you become homeless, they're going to make it look good. You're going to go to this camp. And once you go in that camp, you ain't getting out because there's barbed wire all around. You can't get out. I mean, it's like uh, um, <laughs> um, living it up at the Hotel California. You can check in anytime you like, but you can never check out. Never. You can never leave, actually. That's the song. You can check out any time of night, but you can never leave. Yeah, that's it. Hotel California. Good song, man. Don Henley. Saw him in concert once with Stevie Nicks. Am I dating myself? A great concert, I must say. They did that song together, Hotel California. So um, if you think, again, being outside the United States keeps you safe from being tossed into one of these FEMA camps, think again. Italy, again, was just bombarded with over 7,000 immigrants. And listen to what they say that they are doing and with their law, whatever law they just are passed or they're trying to pass or whatever that is, I'm going to tell you here. The Italian government approved new measures to crack down on migration Monday after the southern island of Le Lampedusa, Lampedusa was again overwhelmed by a wave of arrivals setting off from, come on, article, uh, Tunisia. Well, let me go down to where it says, the measure is approved by the cabinet focused on migrants who don't qualify for asylum and are slated to be reprimanded to their countries. 
the government extended the amount of time such people can be detained. Detained to the EU maximum of 18 months. It also, so basically, they can just throw you in their little prison for 18 months and there's nothing you can do. You're trying, and this is for the good people that are trying to find asylum, the real good people. Because, you know, they can't always tell who's good from bad. So it also plans to increase the number of detention centers. <laughs> detention centers, is that what they call them over there? Detention centers instead of FEMA camps? Um, I'm surprised that they're not using a FEMA camp as a word. So they are extending the number of detention camps to hold these people since capacity has always been insufficient for many. So again, there goes taxpayer money or billionaires money because that's what, what's going to happen, of course. They're going to throw people in camps. So I remember um, back in the day, we talked about the old Walmarts, the little Walmarts, actually putting it, building cages, and everybody said it was such a conspiracy. And now we know that that's, again, truth, conspiracy truth, because in Texas, we found old Walmarts housing these kids, the little ones, <clears throat> not even the adult migrants coming across the border, the little ones, who are also being seen being transported out and transported back in at late hours of the night. Wonder what that's all about. So... Sad, sad, sad. I lost my spot. Where'd it go? My notes went away. Where'd they go? They totally disappeared. Totally disappeared. I hope you're having a good day so far. And everything's flowing well. We just had that great new moon vibration energy. This brings me to the migrant issue here in the United States, especially in the state of Texas. I tried to find a news story. I couldn't find all the information, so don't quote me on everything. But there was something about Texas putting up a barrier to stop people from crossing into Texas. And, of course, the federal government making sure that it's put to a stop. Why is that? Why is that exactly that they want all these people to flow into our country? And not just our country. Every country. It's happening in Italy. It's happening everywhere. This, again, is part of the plan to flood people into certain areas to make it easier. When they take you out of the rural area and shove you into cities, there's more of a chance of outbreaks, right? And it's also an easy way of targeting a large amount of people, if you know what I mean, especially when it comes to their agenda that we used to read on the Georgia Guidestones that they took down to destroy that evidence when the time comes, because that's what that's all about. So, my visions in the past about major issues breaking out in Texas with a fight that could include the cartel. So is that where this is leading to? Because it's kind of seems like it's going in that direction. Not to mention the immigrant protests that are starting to break out here in the United States. Was it New York last week or somewhere like that? I think I'm pretty sure it was New York. That's something that's going to grow, including the groups that are being funded by the Soros group as well. Some that will be popping up in these fall months that are ahead of us. So something to keep an eye out for, according to Spirit. This takes me to Libya and the world's controlled weather events. The folks at Libya suffered horrific events and the globalist suppression long before the recent ca catastrophic event that just claimed more than 20,000 lives. They've been suppressed and had problems for the longest time. And look at what the United States has done to that country over the past few decades. Just look at the sad footage right now here of Libya. After severe rain, multiple dam breaches that I, were in past predictions. And these dam breaches claimed many lives. So many people are missing and it is just absolutely horrific footage. And what makes this even creepier is folks don't realize that this can happen. No matter where you live, where no matter where you're at, friends, no matter where you're at, we've seen it from Hawaii, we see it from Morocco, we see it in Turkey, anywhere. When it comes to Mother Nature, it doesn't matter where you're at. You must always be prepared, especially with these technologies that they have that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me again. Love your water, friends. Love your water. Drink lots of good water. 
Another thing that will be worth its weight in gold in another decade. Less than that, Spirit just said. Less than that, depending on where you live in the world. It's already worth, worth a fortune. They're making billions off of bottled water. Who would have ever thought? We would have never thought that 40 years ago. Nobody would have ever thought that. So, but it was predicted by people like Nostradamus, of course. Going back to these natural, natural disasters, and some are natural. Yes, of course they are. So, you know, but some of them are manipulated with modern day technology, controlling and causing such events to occur, to push people out like Libya, for example, or Turkey. If you don't agree with whatever their agenda is, they're going to come at you. Or if they want your area where you live, they want your land. Spirit tells me, tells us to pay very close attention to events like Libya, where it is so easy for globalists to take out dams. Remember, Spirit warned us about dams being breached and dams breaking down. I've even talked about the Hoover Dam here in the United States. So... It's so easy for them to say it was Lahaina, another great example. Oh, it was the electric company's fault. You know, it was a regular old wildfire. Just like it was just the storms in Libya that made these dams breach. Made them, but who wouldn't know any different? Unless you were standing there watching or inspected it before the storms came. How would you know any different? Oh, the infrastructure was already cracked on two dams all at the same time. Come on, friends. Think about this. Because Spirit says that was not natural. The storm was not natural. The storm was fed. It was injected, Spirit says. It was injected. Remember I showed you that I think last week or the week before where they inject the clouds. Uh, remember that news reporter and they can make any storm any size they want? She said it. We, we showed you the, the, the footage last week or the week before. If you missed it, go back and check it out. It's pretty interesting. So they can make it appear like it's a natural event even though it's the exact opposite of a natural event. So again, does this sound familiar? Sounds like things that happen in other places. <clears throat> now, the Bible says, in the Holy Bible, Jesus says, or God says, I will, I will turn your deserts into rivers. I will turn your deserts into rivers. And this is exactly what occurred just a year ago uh, in the Middle East, where... A majority of the Holy Bible is focused, you know, it's all about the Middle East when you read the Holy Bible. So just last year in September, Saudi Arabia experienced this prophetic event when water started gushing out from the desert, turning the desert into rivers, just as the Bible stated would happen. So we are without a doubt, my friends, 100%. In those times spoken about in the book of Revelation and spoken about in many other prophecies. Speaking of prophecies, if you happen to miss my video that was premiered last week on Friday, the Great Purifier, and the date, Friday, April 13th, 2029, you're not going to want to miss that video, friends. I'll make sure a link pops up here somewhere along the line, so keep an eye out for it. It's a good one. But if you're squeamish, you might not want to watch it. Parental, uh, parental, um, uh, I just totally had a brain freeze. Not important, but yeah. It's rated R. No, it's actually not rated R. It's rated PG-13. <laughs> so Saudi Arabia, speaking of Saudi Arabia, Spirit tells me that soon they are going to be flooded in Saudi Arabia with major issues of their own to deal with. That Mother Earth and our divine creator is, and divine spirits are basically angered at the greed and even more so by the alterations Saudi Arabia is making to Mother Earth herself. They're stealing other people, other countries' fresh water which I showed you about a month or two ago, where here in, right here in Arizona, they were caught buying land and taking the water out. Right in Arizona, of all places, right in the desert, you're stealing the water. Like, what the heck is wrong? And our country's letting, letting them get away with it completely. So the, the, the spirits and Mother Earths, I was told, are, are, are angered by their greed and the way they keep altering the desert and altering things. They're stealing other people's fresh water in order to alter the deserts for their greed and, of course, for their profit. And Spirit says the Lord will soon strike them hard with three large bolts of lightning. 
Again, Spirit says, in Saudi Arabia, the Lord will soon strike them very hard with three large bolts of lightning. Now, I'm not clear exactly what that means. Of course, you know, there's interpretations often that comes from the spirits. But it's easy to figure it, figure it out, right? And I know that soon we're going to find out very, very, very soon what those three bolts that hit Saudi Arabia are going to be. I was also being shown today that Saudi Arabia is building arms, you know, building up their military to allow them to bully other nations, according to Spirit, through their oil production and through military threats to nearby nations. Saudi Arabia, as I said in the past, could also be the culprits that bring about the Great War, the Great Conflict that's spoken about, the number three, as, as people would refer to it as. The natives and others call it the, the Great War. So, again, Saudi Arabia, I've said it in the past, could very likely be the culprit that brings that about. Now, I know most folks think China, and yeah, which is also likely the case as well. But what if it's China backed by the Saudis, or the Saudis backed by China, or other way around? So, the Spirit says to keep an eye on Saudi Arabia. Something they are working tirelessly on. And I don't know. I couldn't put my finger on it. But there's something in Saudi Arabia they're working very tires, tirelessly on. That's going to backfire. And the whole world's going to get to witness whatever it is that backfires. Hopefully, I know. I think they're a part of the response responsible for that big, long city thing they want to build. Another prison camp, basically. Maybe it's that. I'm not sure. Or maybe it has to do with them changing over the deserts the way they are. You know, the Lord just gave them plenty of water. I just showed you the footage for them. So, again, keep our eyes on there. Weather events are also, Spirit says, is going to give Saudi Arabia more water than they stole from other nations, and chaos will break out eventually behind the palace walls. I had a vision, oh, excuse me, of someone coming up behind the Saudi prince. And I don't know if it was the Saudi prince. I'm pretty sure it was in my vision. But somebody was coming behind him, and they had the same robes on that they wear there, uh, and had one of those big Arabian daggers, you know, like kind of swooped, like like curved. You don't want to talk about those Arabian-looking daggers that they used to fight with back in the Arabian times. Somebody came up behind him and stuck it in him. That's what I saw. <clears throat> so again, we can interpret this a couple different ways. It could literally mean exactly what we saw. Somebody's going to come up behind him and stab him. Uh, but it also could be more like he's going to be stabbed in his back by his own people because the person behind him was wearing the same color robes. So that's how it could be both. It could be both, actually. It could be both. Just something to keep an eye out for. So today it's been announced the first hearing is now set for the Biden impeachment hearings. Without a doubt, some huge truth bombs are going to come out around that. And it's going to shock many Americans, at least especially the supporters. While many may not be so surprised when these truths are divulged, but Spirit says a whole, a whole briefcase, a whole vault, excuse me, a vault, not a briefcase, a vault of truth is about to be opened up. Interesting. Not just necessarily on, on JB, but on many others too, because that was the feeling I got because Spirit made me feel that this is going to bring about a parade of truth that will also launch other investigations. Spirit gives me a feeling that there will be arrests that will be made. I'm not sure of who, I'm not sure when, but somehow revolved around this, this whole thing. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. So just sit back and watch. It's going to be an interesting Hollywood show, <laughs> for sure. Uh, the one huge holdback that I felt... <clears throat> in order for them to do a quick and easy impeachment because i actually feel like he wants to his own people want to impeach him they want him out of there for whatever reason the globalists not even his own people let me rephrase that the globalists uh the globalists in control that put him there want him out of there that's kind of fascinating isn't it fascinating i mean i could see why but the big holdback for a quick and easy impeachment is kamala according to spirit because even her own administration does not want her to be handed the key to the white house and Spirit says this is just one of a series of events that are going to play out globally for the remainder of 2023 into 2024 with parades of truth coming out. 
especially in the realm of around leaders and po political parties and countries. This is also going to bring some countries to their knees, according to Spirit. I don't know why or how, but it said that this is going to bring countries to their knees, probably America being one of them, uh, followed up by a rise up of citizens um, against the current, the former, and potential future leaders. So all they're all different types of rise up citizens. Some people are rising up to to you know for justice against former leaders. There's a rise up of people uh, for current leaders to make a change, and then even ones that are trying to become leaders to try to stop them. So it's going to be interesting. We have all these different groups that are going to form. It's going to be very very interesting. And the challenging part is going to be to decipher which ones are real and which ones are funded. You know, but tune in every Tuesday and we'll figure out which ones are real and which ones are funded. Speaking of real or funded, the Mexican aliens and UFOs. <laughs> Perhaps you know about this. Perhaps you do not. Maybe you're aware. Maybe you're not aware. But last week, there was a release of UFO and alien truth by the Mexican government. So a lot different than here in the United States where they basically had whistleblowers and then tried to debunk the whistleblowers. And they're still debunking the whistleblowers surprisingly they weren't able to kill them before they blew the whistle or was that whistleblow actually part of the cia agenda i'm going to say that whistleblow was exactly that a cia agenda to put this out in our faces as i've been warning you for a long time now as a part of their future plan a best way to get people to agree to come together in one government is to say that there's an alien threat it's the easiest way for them to do it. It might be the only way for them to do it. And I have more on you about that, but let's stick with the Mexican UFOs first. I wonder if the Mexican aliens speak that language or, 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 or if they speak all our languages. That's, they probably understand all of us, actually, because they are known to talk telepathically and communicate telepathically, which is the way they say the Atlanteans and the Lumerians and the people Mu did back in that time 13,000 years ago approximately so they literally just put this footage out right here just put this footage out that eerily resembles and you gotta agree with me here eerily resembles et from steven spielberg's hit movie in the 1980s et looks just like et hmm, maybe they knew what et looked like before they created the movie et so of course finding such footage and, and trying to find this these live hearings last week were it was almost impossible it was very hard to find anything on it when it was happening. And if you were in Mexico, it was easy to find. But here in the United States, at least, it was very hard to find any footage on it. But I was able to find some of this footage that I am showing you. And I'm going to show you a couple clips in a minute. But they don't want anybody outside of Mexico to witness this footage, which I found inf interesting. Which makes me think of what Mexico is doing is actually real. Like, really not part of a CIA agenda, but Mexico saying, hey, look, this is what we have, and we need to do something about this. You know, we're running out of time. It's exactly what they said, actually. We're running out of time. So, being that they tried to hold this from us, and you don't see this on the news here in the United States. Tell me where, we have friends all over the world here. Are they telling you and your country about this event happening in Mexico with the UFO hearings? And this uh, crazy footage of these alien beings that are petrified that were allegedly found in a cave or somewhere in Mexico. Uh, my, what I, it's really just bad. Uh, I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> I am speechless. This is literally an unprecedented event as the Mexican government warns that we are not taking, we're, that we, are, United States especially, is taking way too long to connect with other planets. And that soon we're all going to be left behind. And that's exactly what they are saying in this video. So if this is real, which I, I have no doubt it is, then my favorite part is the x-rays. The x-rays of this alleged replica of E.T. Obviously, this little E.T. never got the phone home either. Poor little guy. He didn't get the phone home. Uh, but here's a little clip. Check it out. It is in Spanish. En aves, que son estrellamientos, sino son seres que estaban sepultados en minas de diatomea, tierra de diatomea. La diatomea es un alga fosilizada con 17 millones por investigadores, periodistas, como por científicos, que hoy aquí van a dar a conocer algunas de sus extraordinarias conclusiones. Esos cuerpos 
que de acuerdo a los científicos que van a declararlo aquí, son seres no humanos, que no son parte de nuestra evolución terrestre y que después de desaparecer no hay una evolución posterior. So why now? Why now after all this time? Why is the Mexican government insisting that we are not alone? Because that's what they're insisting. We are not alone, and we all know that already. We've known that for a long time, but they're now admitting it as well, and they're showing us shocking evidence. Um, all of a sudden, this is coming out all, all of a sudden out of nowhere. And funny, soon after the whistleblowers here in the United States, again, all of a sudden after that, the aliens that landed in, in Las Vegas to do some gambling, the alleged shooting down of UFOs in the United States, first Chinese spy balloons, then UFOs, so it appears that the Mexican government may be on board with getting humanity into fear. Maybe, maybe, again, they're a CIA asset telling us, you know, that, that they pose a major, major risk. And this is what's going to happen next, not from Mexico, but from the globalists. This is, trust me, this is what they're going to say next, that these alien beings are going to pose a serious risk to our health. By bringing foreign diseases and viruses to humanity. That's what they're going to say. Mark my words. Spirit showed me that today. I'm like, I'm surprised they didn't say that yet, actually. I'm like, that's a good one. I'm like, I couldn't even think of that if I was a globalist. That was a good one. Spirit said, you watch. That's what they're going to do. Therefore, insisting that we have to shoot them down. We have to shoot them down. And they'll probably pose a thing. As I said before, remember, next year, I guarantee you that my previous prediction that I made a visions of a UFO crashing and being a big story and everybody catching it on film would be no coincidence. It would be an arranged event. A flag that flies ever so falsely, friends. <laughs> flag that flies ever so falsely. <clears throat> and when that does occur, and again, it's going to occur, I guarantee you. I'd be shocked this year, but I believe definitely next year that that previous prediction and vision of that UFO crash will come into fruition. And Spirit says it's already a planned event and likely it's going to occur in the United States. And of course, right before the elections, of course, right before the elections, that's what's going to happen. You watch. And I wouldn't doubt that when this fake craft, it's a real UFO, but not from outer space, from our government, that they're going to purposely crash. And probably put some fake beings on it on top of it. And then when it all happens, they'll probably say, oh, my God, people got rashes all over them or there's a spread or something. You watch. So be aware. You've heard it here first. Remember that, too. You heard it here first. Jack Nicholson. Here's Johnny. I love the movie The Shining. Uh, Jack was popping in my mind all week this week. I don't know why. Other than he is my favorite actor. I think he's awesome. Although he hasn't done anything that I favorably act. He hasn't favorably acted in anything in a long time. So I was feeling that it's got to be related to his health, right? Jack has got to be like in his mid-80s, right? So when I looked up his numbers, what the, I forget what year. He's um, his birthday. He's a 22 master number like me. He's born on the 22nd. His is in April. Mine is this month. 22 master number, which would make sense of, it, of where he's at. And yeah, it's just kind of interesting. So that puts him in his sixth year, moving into his seven year next year. So December, the month of December for Jack Nicholson could be a really rough and tough month. So, you know, I decided to like Google Jack just to see if anything came up in the news about Jack Nicholson around, revolved around his health. Because, you know, I felt like what spirit, him popping in my mind was related to his health and likely that he's not going to be around anymore. Jack will not be back. But then I read this article that the 80, oh, he's 86. That's right. 86 year old actor just mooned the Boston Celts at a basketball game. <laughs> it's kind of funny you got to admit but like gross how gross are you jack nicholson you're gross like and how old are you 86 not six 86 yeah los angeles september 18th um during a i guess a lakers game he actually mooned the boston audience according to this article what we do now if that were you and me we'd get thrown in handcuffs and locked up and put in jail but he's allowed to do that, right? Because guaranteed, if that was any of us, that's exactly what they would have locked us up and threw us out of the damn game. 
All right, threw us out of the game, put us in cuffs, and probably took us away for indecent exposure because that's exactly what the crime is, indecent exposure. But Jack, baby, got back. He got away with it. Interesting enough. It's mind-blowing, isn't it? Mind-blowing. But anyway, going back to Nicholson's health, next year he's in the seven. I only look at the numbers because, as you know, if you followed me long enough, we see a consistent pattern with people passing in the nine vibration and in the four vibration. Uh, I know my mama passed in her nine. I know a lot of people that passed in their nine year, actually. But we have others that pass in their four. They're the two most common years. Not that it always happens and everybody that dies dies in one of those years. No. People die in their one year. Lisa Marie Presley died in her one year. <clears throat> uh, so Jack's going into his seven. And the seven is another common year, actually, behind the nine and the four. Only in the fact that the seven's all about spiritual ascension, religion, and all that. So it, it could be a very strong time where people ascend to the other side. So February is also going to be a very challenging time period month for Mr. Nicholson. For sure. I lost my notes again. The hell? I'm going to close it and open it back up. So bizarre. Anyway, moving right along to uh, what was next on my list, because I know in my brain, if I can think clearly, open, there it is. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what I was going to talk about, Russell Brand, before I even found my notes, and social media bans, and Russell Brand. Perhaps you're aware, maybe you're not aware, that there now seem to be some type of an attack happening to Russell Brand, and both, you know... Old allegations and new allegations that are being thrown at Brandt uh, of, you know, of the sexual nature, those, those kind of accusations. And we've heard them in the past about him. I don't know whether they're true or not. I don't, don't didn't research it, don't really care much. I just thought I'd bring it up on the fact of the whole, you know, cutting people, not allowing people to speak. Because, you know, those sexual nature, of course, uh, allegations, regardless of whether they're true or not, still, uh, you know, took away his right to make money and from content. He has, it's been stripped away from him here. Well, at least on, on YouTube, it was stripped away from him completely. But interesting enough, I find, is that they didn't take his channel down. They just took away his ability to make money from that channel and i'm sure russell brand has his own platform where he's making way more money than he does on youtube on his own platform his own private platform where you get to see more and hear more unfiltered you know a lot of them do it so so he's still allowed to produce content so how is that fair why does why, why how does this at all make sense really how does it all make sense because he certainly does not need the money friends he certainly does not need the money so you're not hurting him you know, he's still allowed to speak and get his content out. And not to mention, again, that he's cashing in on other platforms as well. I have something in my mouth. I was eating homemade cucumber salad a little while ago. And I hurried up to come on here and finish up what you guys. Russell Brandt sex assault allegations lead to tour postponement, suspension of YouTube channel monetization. The fallout of allegations of sexual assault against comedian Russell Brandt continued to pile up Monday, September 18th, when YouTube said that it had suspended the monetization of Brandt's content following serious allegations against the creator. See, and here's the thing. Not, you know, again, regardless of whether he's guilty or, or, or not guilty, that should have nothing to do with content that he's providing unless he's actually talking about it, which, which he wasn't, I don't think. That, that's just the only thing that gets me with that. And why not? Why just the monetization and not the whole channel? It's just very interesting. And here's another point that I have that's really important because. So here's the point that I was going to make with this, because I know that I've seen many things on Russell's channel that he has talked about that I've seen so many other folks actually get taken down for saying. And he continues to talk about subjects that the rest of us are not allowed to talk about. How come he gets to and the rest of us don't? That's the only problem and only, only gripe that I have. Because it just doesn't seem um, very fair, if you know what I mean. 
at all. It doesn't seem very fair at all. And regardless, and is he innocent? Remember a while back that that's what I was saying. I, I don't know why my notes all keep disappearing. This is so bizarre today. So we also know that Tucker was another one that was a big target, of course, to the globalists and those that want to shut down anything that he's saying before he even before Tucker launched his own independent content. Except the difference is, is that Tucker is on the new X platform and Musk is basically protecting Tucker by allowing him on that platform and paying him to be on there. So do not be at all surprised at all. That if you don't see a deal being made with Russell Brand and the X platform as well, do not at all be surprised to see that. While still remaining on YouTube, kind of like Joe Rogan did. Joe Rogan, remember, left, but now you can still find his stuff on YouTube. Clips, not his whole show, because he's get you, get you in both directions. So profited on both sides. Another one that can say things that others can't, which is really interesting. And that's just my own, only problem with all this is that they can say things. And, and again, you know, if it was the other way around with somebody else, they probably would have took you down completely would be my guess. But instead, just taking away your money when you're already rich and don't need the money to begin with. <laughs> Makes no sense, friends. Makes no sense at all. And I like some of Russell's content. Don't get me wrong. He definitely puts out some great information, information that others cannot put out. Wonder if that'll still stand. Wonder how that's going to work out. I think it'll all work out fine and it'll be back on and the story will blow over. It's just to take your attention off of more important things, of course, as always. So anyway, as I wonder why and continue to wonder why, never receiving the answers that we need, other than thinking that they are part of the underground, maybe they're a part of it. No, remember, it's all about causing division amongst the people and, and such. I don't necessarily think brand is a, a part of it, actually. But others could be, like Tucker, a big part of it, bringing that division. But they are also bringing truth. So regardless whether they're part of it or not, they're still bringing out some of the truth. And they could still be lying as well. So anyway, moving right along. If, if more people ask that same question to me, though, that I just asked, like, why? Why? It doesn't make sense. If more and more people ask that same question, then that fast, they, they would take them down quickly. But nobody's asking that question. Just like nobody's asking the big question about Lahaina. Why is an investigation not happening? You know, and we're asking that question, but why are we not pushing the issue with that? Like really pushing the issue. So Spirit told me that there's another attack like that in which we witnessed already in California. Uh, right next to Oprah's pop property in California. You know that whole story. I forget what part of California, but y'all will tell me in the comments, I'm sure. Hawaii, Lahaina, uh, and even recently in part of Canada. All, all, all those events and something more coming our way, something bigger. And here's my feeling, friends. They're going to get caught. They're going to get caught. That's what my feeling is. These sickos are going to get caught. They're going to do something, and it's going to be awful. I hate to say it. It's going to take awful to catch awful. It's going to be something huge. And Spirit reminds me of the events that took place in September of 20, 2001 in New York City. Similar, 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 but not similar. Meaning, oh, that many, that many people or more. Okay. So, United States. But it'll be something... Of course, so ca catastrophic, but at the same time, so obvious that they're not going to be able to get past this. Of course, first they'll pinpoint China. And we know, again, at Lahaina, that satellite, that CCP satellite was right above at the time. But it wouldn't be just the CCP. We all know Oprah's in on it, baby. We all know that. Come on. It's all part of that group, that global group that really control it all. They control it all. There's a control at the top, the top of the level. And that's what we have here. But will justice be served? I tell you, if enough of us pray and we all continue to hold in the light justice over Hawaii. So envision that. Envision the symbols of, of justice hanging over. The scales of justice hanging over Lahaina. Visualize that with love. And visualize it in a big heart. A big heart of love. 
with the scales of justice in it, hovering over Lahaina. If enough of us do that, Spirit says, yes, justice will be served. And it may not just necessarily be in that case. Like I said, it could be the other event that they're planning that they get caught at that actually brings into the justice. So, of course, they'll probably blame China first. But Spirit says it's not just China, but China is a part of it. So some of the elite in China, there we go, because, again, it's all that upper, upper, higher level that has access to those satellites. And if you remember what I said in the show, 24 hours before that Lahaina fire took place, I had a vision of a satellite or a drone swooping down some type of laser to cause a city fire 24 hours before it happened. So now we know that there was a satellite right above it. And we know about the lasers and we know all about the tests they did with the green lasers right before that. So going back to justice being served, hold all that in the light. As of now, Spirit tells me it's all still up in the air as far as this justice and the direction it's going to lead in. So we have always different potential outcomes. Same with your life. Every day we have new opportunities and new outcomes. Things can shift. There's doors all throughout our day, throughout our lives. Different doors that lead to different future destinations. So things can shift and change. That's why Spirit tells us, pray, hold the heart in the scales of justice over Lahaina for justice and, and do it with love. Not with hatred and anger that you're mad, but with pure love and pure love will win. So I'm taking Spirit's advice and this is my birthday week and I do a lot of ceremony and meditation on my birthday week, especially on the equinox, which is Saturday. So remember, the equinox is all about celebrating your harvest. Well, here in, on the northern hemisphere, it's the opposite in the, in the southern hemisphere. But here we're celebrating the harvest and that in which we, you know, sowed and reaped in the season, whether it's out of your garden or in life in general, mainly in life and all things. So that's important. So I'm going to do that in my ceremony this week with holding the heart and the scales of justice over Lahaina and seeing that justice with pure love play out. I'm hoping that I will get more information when I do my channeled predictions. I, that's part of my plan and tuning into that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So to me, it's just sad that Spirit says, you know, this future attack, there's one coming again, and it's going to somehow lead to justice in, in the long run. As of now, it's leaning more towards justice than non-justice. So we got to keep praying. We got to keep holding it in the light so it, we make sure it's justice so that they don't alter that timeline on us because you know those the, those uh, uh, globalists they know how to do all that stuff um they're not going to succeed spirit says we will win in the long run it's just sad how many folks and how many animals are going to be forced to suffer from their evil agenda and attacks in the future that that's the worst part um, no, yeah, that's bad. But I think the worst part is actually no justice. Them not paying the price for the things that they do. Now, of course, in Hawaii, the Hawaiian Electric Company is taking the blame and has been the target of the blame of the Lahaina fires. When we know that, again, truth keeps leaking out. The electric wasn't even on. It was powered off and just a whole bunch of other things. The, the pictures of lasers. So much, folks. So much, friends. Again, everybody knows. And those that don't are just, they are totally asleep. They're like mummified zombies. So why blame Hawaiian Electric? Well, here's why. First, it's their easy scapegoat, friends. It's so easy to blame electricity or blame heavy rain on two dams breaching in the same city. Two dams, not just one, two. Come on now. That, that wasn't natural. That was not natural at all. Sabotage. There's more to come with that. Going back to Hawaii and the Hawaii Electric, it doesn't make sense to blame the fires on, on that, of course, is a scapegoat, even though common sense tells us anybody with a half a brain that the electric definitely, of course, the electric can start fires. Yes. I mean, faulty electric wiring in people's houses is a big cause of fires. Uh, but six to seven fires all started simultaneously. We know this from evidence of satellite imaging, right? So that's the difference. Come on, I could say, yeah, fire, electric definitely starts a fire. But six to seven of them all at the same exact time and completely in a circle around the city? Come on now, friends. Sad. So the governor recently just filed 
for a housing crisis in Lahaina. Check out this clip. It's declared a housing emergency. The proclamation is designed to push through Hawaii's regulatory red tape, but some groups are alarmed. Governor Green says it's time to get aggressive on housing. We're waiving some of the restrictions on um, the amount of land that you know, that historically was, you know, allowable for building because we just want to get going. The working group would not be subject to sunshine laws. You know, I'm just like, just very disappointed and really alarmed. For the first time in history, I believe there has been an emergency proclamation by a governor before there's an emergency. Josh Green on July 17, three weeks before the fire, issued an emergency proclamation, which gave blanket powers to people to go in and work on getting development projects for, you guessed it, his state. But this is a very, very dangerous precedent. Also, it begs to question what is going on? Why would someone do that? Why would this guy do that? What is the purpose of that? Start waking up you're going to find out that there are some various, very, very nefarious things going on that are alarming. And they are worse, by the way, than Larry Ellison, the owner of Lanai. They're worse than the billionaires like Oprah and Bill Gates. They're actually worse than that. They're deeper than that. But it's time to wake up and understand that there's some really strange things going on that don't add up. And this is scary for America. And it's a wake up for the entire nation. More importantly, folks are still questioning, including myself, and I talked about it many times, is where are all the little ones? What the heck happened to the little ones? Remember what I told you? There would be, you know, when it comes to, like, when you're cremated, your skull still isn't, isn't, doesn't burn. It's crushed. So if you ever had the remains of somebody in your family, a loved one that passed, there's, like, bone in it because they crush it. So where are the little ones? They should be able to account for each and every single one of them. Unless, again, a laser could disintegrate bone, I would imagine. It sure in heck melted aluminum and disintegrated everything else except for stuff that was blue, another shady thing that happened. So folks are questioning where all the kids are going and the alleged evidence revolved around the school buses. So I'm going to show you these two clips. One of them is all words. You're going to have to read as you go along. But check out these two clips about the buses that I thought was really interesting that everybody needs to see. Because as I told you before, the little ones, the majority of them, were taken away. On boats. Spirit just said. Check it out. Military professionals. Um, as you can see, this is an airfield at an unknown location. You can see the jets in the background. This is a military base. And there's a lot of um, mysterious occurrences that go on here that I can't go too deep about. I think I've already said too much, but if you're looking for the children, they're probably somewhere in this general facility. I'll leave you the Easter egg yourself. There's more videos, and if you take a look at the billboard right here. If school was canceled that day, as they tell us, wouldn't the buses be lined up in the parking lot since they weren't in use? Footage has surfaced of a long line of school buses evacuating from Lahaina. Speaking of the little ones, did you see that our little one hero, Tim Ballard, the, uh, from Sound of Freedom? He's a hero. He's a hero to the little ones. He's a true superhero. 
he is actually considering, <clears throat> excuse me, running for Romney's seat over there in Utah uh, as a Senate. I thought, think that would be just fabulous. Sound of Freedom inspiration, Tim Ballard mulls for a run for Senator Romney's seat. Tim Ballard, the former employee for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, uh, who rescued young Colombian siblings and others trafficked, you know the whole story. Mr. Ballard announced that he is interested in running for the 76-year-old Republican seat during the appearance of the Sean Spicer show. So interesting enough, he would be great. But now you all know, just as well as I do, that they are not going to allow that to happen. Uh, but again, together, we can hold Tim Ballard's face in a heart of love hoovering over top of the Senate seat in Utah and help make that happen. But they're not going to let Romney's a part of the whole friggin' elite globalist you know, agenda. They're not, they want him in that seat. I mean, look at poor Mitch O'Connell and how his recent health and freezing up in cameras and they're still keeping him in that spot. Come on, that man, he's not running that spot. We all know that. Anyway, going back, did you really see in California, and I couldn't get the information together for you. I wanted to, so maybe I'll add it to my Lahaina video that I'll do next week, that there's... The Silicon Valley billionaires are buying up all this land in Northern California to the point that the um, courts forced the companies to become transparent as to why they're buying up all this land. And it's literally like the TV show Yellowstone in the way that they are literally kind of screwing the poor people out of their farms and out of their land. And now, you know, not wanting to pay money and trying to force these people to not be able to raise the prices on their land. Because these billionaires are buying it all up, so they're raising their prices. Do you blame them? Hey, this is supposed to be America, a free country and a capitalist capitalism. You should be able to charge whatever you want for your property. There should be no law. You want my property? This is when I'm not willing to budge for less than this. There should be no court in this country that says, oh, you, need, you can't raise your price of your property. That's a bunch of crap, friends. A bunch of crap. Well, the... Of course, it's the rich Silicon Valley billionaires that are buying this land in California. So maybe they're not all the way up at the top, the high level, because they should know that California is going to endure some major weather events in the future by the end of this decade, by 2030. You think they'd know about that? Uh, <laughs> instead of spending all their money on land that's going to be in the water eventually. I thought that was really interesting. And of course, you know what they want to do with that land. They want to build a smart city. It's one of the places that they want to build it, just like they want to do in Lahaina, which they're, they're going to try to do. But a little bit of good, um, positive vibes here is that Spirit says they're not going to succeed in their complete mission of the smart cities. Yes, they will build them and they will complete some of them, but they will not fulfill their complete mission, whatever that complete mission is. So that's good to know, right? Did you see also that recently the uh, very less than smart governor of New Mexico just pulled this crap that if you, calling a health crisis as a way to con break the Constitution and take away people's rights to bear arms. That's right. The less than smart governor of New Mexico thought it was a really good idea to use this health emergency as an excuse to break the constitutional law, uh, the right to bear arms. And instantly, as should be expected, people shot back very quickly at the governor, refusing to abide by that rule because it does go against the Constitution. But this is what they're doing, friends. They're going to try to use this as a test to see how it would go over. It didn't go over, of course. That woman needs to be removed from her seat. She needs to just be removed. How dare you go in there and try to remove constitutional rights and use an excuse of a health crisis? Health crisis has nothing to do with people having the right to bear arms. That's why the Constitution allows us to bear arms, to protect ourselves and to keep away evil, bad government. It says it in the Constitution, the bad guys, right? Protect yourself from the bad guys. So that didn't go over very well, of course, and it shouldn't at all. But is this the test? Is this what they're going to do, friends? Use health emergencies as a way of, 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 of breaking our constitutional rights? Well, they sure just tried. And you know that that couldn't have all been her little idea. Of course, it wasn't all her little idea. Somebody's in her ear telling her what to do. 
as they're drinking their little martinis or their glasses of, you know, 500 hour bottle of wine and so forth. Thought that was interesting. And with that, I'm way over and I'm going to end up uploading late. But right now I got to stop and say, you've got mail. It's my birthday. Yes. And peace. All we are saying is give peace a chance. So this is actually, and I know people will watch this from the beginning. This is, oh, he's got his shirt on backwards or upside down. No. Do your research and research symbolism and ancient symbolism. This actually symbolizes peace. Also, if you're familiar with Billy Meyer, who uh, says that he's been receiving visits from the Plagiarian people from, from outer space since he was a little boy, he's got the best footage of UFOs on record as far as I'm concerned. And he channeled this back in, I think, the 1970s from the Plagiarian people. And in this, you see the peace sign right there in the middle. That is the true peace sign. Think of this, friends. When you say, hey, peace, yo. Yo, peace, man, peace. You're holding your fingers upwards. You don't go, yo, peace, man, peace. No, you don't. You hold your hands up. This is the proper way. And I got to thank Sheila for sending me the proper way of a peace sign. Sheila is definitely a fan of the show, of course, because that's how she was able to know because we were just talking about this a week ago. And Sheila is from Toronto, Canada. I thank you for the lovely shirt and making sure that peace sign, because if it was the other way, I wouldn't wear it, by the way. You know, it's a really funny story. When I was a little kid, we'd find cool stuff in the trash dumpsters. <laughs> we were kids. I was like seven years old. And I found this glass. It was made out of like melted glass. It was a peace sign. It was purple. I was so upset when that broke. I had that forever. It didn't break until I was like in my 20s. It broke. I was so upset about that. And... It was made out of basically glass, like some kind of glass that was like melted and formed into a peace sign. And I hung it on my bedroom wall. And I remember my mom came in and it was hanging up like this. And my mom came in and she said, you have it backwards. You have it backwards. It's supposed to be the other way. I'm like, mm -mm, I want it this way. I like it this way. She's like, well, it's upside down. I'm like, well, I like it this way. It's supposed to go this way. I didn't know. I was seven years old. And so many decades later, I learned that, yeah, this is actually the symbol of peace. And of course, CIA operatives trick the people, the hippies of the 60s and 70s into holding signs promoting war when they actually thought that they were promoting peace. So thank you, Sheila. I appreciate that and the card that you had sent me as well. And Billy, Billy always sends me a card. Billy is a graduate of master class. Um, Billy's great. At your age, it is best to accept that the sweet bird of youth has flown. Nasty little pecker of middle age. <laughs> Billy, Billy Knock. Love you, buddy. I hope you're doing good. Haven't seen or heard from you in a long time. Then we have wishing you a joyous birthday from Holly. Thank you, Holly, for the cards and the gifts and this gift. And I don't know what I did with your card. Is it in here? It should be in here. This cool box. I'm like, did somebody send me cigars? I don't smoke cigars. <laughs> That's what I thought when I first opened it. And what a nice little lovely little gift this is for my little friends. Uh, my, I'm just going to play music. I can't play it too long, you know. Copyright. I'll get you all that. Uh, from Christina and Carmelo. Carmelo, also previous students of classes. And all kinds of cool stuff in here. Lottery tickets that I did not scratch off. I'll wait till my birthday to scratch those bad boys off. Uh, Amazon gift card. I can't even read that. I am blind. Amazon gift card. And they even gave me something to hang up on my wall for my birthday. <laughs> You're funny, Christina and Carmelo. Love you guys. Thank you for caring and sharing. Happy birthday. And then someone sent me this, and there was nothing in there to tell me who, other than Tony in Pismo Beach, California, sent me Eat Right for Your Type. This is interesting. So I'm going to, I didn't really look. Oh, there is a card in there. I did not see that. I did not see that before. Sending a garden of birthday wishes. I don't have glasses on, so I can't read all of that. But thank you so much, Tony. Eat right for your blood type. 
and I will be totally looking into that because I like to. I'm channeling my Betty Crocker this week. Totally channeling that girl. Channeling her. I made some zucchini, uh, nut bread with a hint of apple, some butternut squash soup with a hint of apple. I got like two bushels of apples and pears, so I'll be making stuff. And then I received this card that I didn't even open yet from Donna and Oh, Donna and Bob, my friends back east. You sent it to my P.O. box. You could have texted me. I would have gave you my address. Friends. Friends. This is one of those pop-out paper things that are really... Oh, my God. And another lottery ticket. It's going to be a winner. It's Pennsylvania. Uh, pop-out butterflies. This is kind of cool. Pop it all out. I'll do that. Like that. Somehow. It's got butterflies that go all over it. Thank you, Donna and Bob. I hope you guys are well. I haven't heard from you in a long time. I hope all, oh, here's a little, that's a card. A little butterfly card. Cute, cute, cute. Thank you all for your best wishes of birthday wishes and your gifts and your love and your support. I so am happy always to be here with you. Again, keep an eye out. I will have a channeled prediction video that I will have out hopefully by Thursday night. Uh, that's the plan because Friday, I, nope, I'm unplugged. Actually, I'm unplugged Thursday through Sunday. But I will premiere that on Thursday as long as I get it done, which I should. So I love you all lots. I hope you enjoyed today's content. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. And remember to be bold, be true, be kind, be you, baby, because you rock. You're awesome. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste. Much love.